Good morning and uh, welcome to today's webinar. Um, so for those of you who are joining uh, for the first time today and haven't met me, uh, my name is Marie Cheng and I'm the Partnerships Manager here at MyHR Toolkit um, and I'd like to welcome you all to today's webinar. Um, so for those of you who have been joining uh, joining us for quite some time on our webinars, uh, we've been running a whole host of different topics on different HR and business topics, um, all with varying different uh, popularity. And in um, January this year, we just started a series of webinars aimed primarily at uh, SMEs and HR professionals around more business specific um, skills. So we've been looking at topics such as like running engaging webinars, uh, why social media is really important, how to optimize SEO and stuff like that. And again, we'll talk about that a little bit in the webinar today, but we can think back to some of our previous ones. Um, so for today, uh, you'll all have noticed that we live in a very content heavy kind of society. There's lots of social media around, there's lots of digital content everywhere. So today, Camille uh, Briard, who's our marketing expert, is going to be looking at how you can create compelling content to attract uh, more clients. Uh, in terms of the format of today, she will spend um, approximately 20, 25 minutes covering the main part of the content and then at the end uh, we'll have some time to answer some of your questions. Housekeeping wise, there's a bit of a toolbar at the bottom of your screen, so hopefully you can see that. Uh, there's a Q&A box, uh, so feel free to add in questions as you go along. There's also a chat box, uh, do get involved in the chat. If we could ask you to ask the questions in the Q&A box, just more of a case that if we don't miss them, that would be really good. Um, a bit more housekeeping, just to clarify that today's session is obviously offering general advice, tips and best practice. Um, and as always, we are recording the webinar. Uh, so for people who've had to jump out a little bit early or have, have to, something has cropped up. Um, and also just to make sure that if you'd like to sign up to our next webinar, which is on how to maximise your LinkedIn platform as a consultant, what I will do is once the webinar is underway, I'll add a link to the registration page in the chat. Um, OK, so right. Uh, Without further ado then, I'm just going to uh, introduce you to Camille, uh, who will do a bit of an introduction about herself on how to create compelling content for your clients. Hello, thank you very much, Marie, for that lovely intro. Good morning, everyone. Lovely to see you with us today. Um, I'm going to be talking about how to create compelling content to attract your clients. And as Marie said, I'm Camille. I'm the Senior Marketing Executive here at My HR Toolkit, which is a HR software system for SMEs, for anyone who's unfamiliar. And um, yeah, today we're going to be looking into why content marketing is important for your business online and how to create great content to attract prospects and eventually new clients. So just as a little run through of today's agenda, um, firstly, I'm just going to have a little dip into why create content you know, quite a big question, um, but maybe I won't cover it completely in, in 20, 25 minutes, but we'll do our best. Um, obviously you're here, so you know that content is important, but I want to touch on some points as to why content marketing is so effective and why it's worth investing time in. And then I'll be looking into Camille's top content tips. And um, again, not having time to cover absolutely everything you can do to make your contact stand out, but um, details some of my top tips on um, how to make your content pop and things that have worked for me in my career. And then it's not just about having great content, it's also about how you put that content out there and how you reach your prospective clients. So I'll be dipping into some tips on that as well. I'm also going to cover a little bit about the power of outsourcing and um, how you can also look into outsourcing content um, to external creators uh, for your business as well. And then last but not least, we'll have the Q&A. Uh, so make sure if you do have a question for me, um, do ask that in the Q&A feature in Zoom and we'll get to that after the presentation. So first and foremost, why create content? It's the big question. Well, People want to find information online. Everybody is looking on search engines, is looking on social media and different platforms online um, to find information and also entertaining content for them. And um, so providing that content for your audience creates engagement with you online. Um, so basically through finding your content, they can engage with you and, and get to know you. Also creating content helps them um, showcase your expertise. For example, 
if you're a HR consultant or a business consultant, um, you can then sort of use your content to really put across that you know your stuff and that you're a trusted voice. Sorry, Camille, and just one, one second. I uh, just noticed, um, are you, we can't seem to see your screen. Oh, right, sorry. <laughs> so, um, sorry, technical hitch, we will, we will get that sorted out in a minute. I'll leave a... Sorry about that, I just steamed straight ahead. <laughs> Okay, one sec. Um, I'll just quickly, oh, well, I've kind of gone through the agenda, which we didn't really need a slide for anyway. So I'll just pop back a couple. Give me one second. Da -da. Yeah, if I just go back to this slide. So why create content? And uh, yeah, we're wanting the engagement. We're also wanting to show our expertise and um, gain trust with our audience. And then ultimately you're using content marketing online as well uh, to find brand recognition. Um, so really you want people to be aware of your brand, aware of what you're all about, what your business is doing. And so for example, if you're looking for a HR consultant, um, you'll kind of be aware of a particular business or consultant before you're even looking for it. So that's really powerful. So basically in terms of what you're wanting to do with content marketing, you're wanting to find new prospects, um, you're wanting to generate leads and eventually getting new clients um, through your content. Okay. So um, this quote I thought was really good and uh, kind of tied in quite nicely to what I was just saying. It's a, from a HubSpot blog post that I was reading and um, basically says consistent, high quality and engaging content impacts audience decision making more than any other technique. And um, this happens all the way down the line. Um, and I also did find a really interesting stat um, from a blog post from the expert marketer, Neil Patel, that according to Dragon Search Marketing, 61% of consumers are influenced by custom content, um, which is rather a large amount. So it just shows that it is worth putting time and effort into that content and things do pay off. And um, talking of sort of the customer journey or client journey, um, a really interesting way to think about it, you may have come across this before, is in terms of the marketing funnel. Um, and we love a visualization. Um, so I've just put an example of it up there. And um, basically it's a way to visualize where someone is in their client journey. And you can also kind of think about what kind of content you can create to cater to people who were at different stages of that journey. And so basically, the further up the marketing funnel someone is, the less engaged they are. So at the top there, I've kind of noted that someone at the sort of top of the funnel will be a totally unaware prospect. They don't really know, for example, that they want HR consultancy. Um, they don't really know about, about your business and what you're doing. They're just sort of totally out in the ether. And then you go all the way down to someone becoming aware of you, being interested, considering your services intending to buy, sort of making evaluations on, on whether you're the, the best person and then eventually becoming a client. Um, so we have client all the way down at the bottom there. And um, yeah, you can basically create content to cater for um, different levels. So for example, further up the funnel, I think people are looking more for informational content, sometimes entertaining content as well. Um, but, you know, HR can be quite a serious topic. So people are looking for information, particularly em employers are looking for information on um, how to manage their employees and how to sort out any HR issues that they're having. And uh, later down the line, when someone's more looking for, for a consultant and they actually have that in mind, they're probably looking for more sales oriented content um, in, in terms of your services. Uh, they might be looking at reviews, testimonials, that kind of thing later down the line. Um, so you can be creating a bright, wide variety of content to appeal to people at different stages. And really there are so many different kinds of content that you can use, which I've just put a few of them up here. Um, and um, different types of content do require different strategies and skills. Um, so that's something to consider how you want to kind of spend your time and your budget in terms of what you're creating and, and what skills you have. Um, and um, but having a range of content options means you can reach different audiences because some people are going to prefer to consume their content via a blog post or maybe a downloadable guide, um, whereas others will prefer video content, maybe a podcast while they're on the go. Um, they might want to come on a webinar 
as you guys have come on today. Um, so people are looking for different things. So that can be quite good for reaching a variety of people through different mediums. And um, I have put social media in there. It is a little bit different um, as it's also a medium for sharing your content, um, but important to think about in relation to content marketing as well, uh, because you can be, you know, you're putting sort of original content out on social media as well. That can be a, a way to reach people quite quickly. Um, and then you can also use it as a platform to share your longer pieces and, and draw people in as well. Okay. So I just wanted to do a little poll uh, based on sort of the different types of content that are out there and just to learn a little bit more about what you guys are doing and what your aims are. Um, so I'm interested in what types of content that you currently produce or want to produce. So I'm just going to run a poll. Okay. So I'm going to launch that poll now and hopefully that's popped up for you. Um, so I'll just give you a little bit of time to vote on that and you can choose any kind of content that you create. So it's a, should be hopefully a multiple choice. Yep, getting some votes in, fabulous. I'll just give you a little bit of time to have a look at all the options. And also if anyone's got, obviously I've not been able to cover every type of content on this. Um, so if anyone else has um, other things that they're doing that I've not covered, do let us know in the chat. Um, I'd be interested to, to learn about what, what you guys are doing and, and what you're prioritizing in your content marketing. Okay, I'm just gonna give that a few more seconds. Um, just a few people haven't voted. Don't worry if you don't want to, it's also, it's also anonymous. So I'm not gonna say, oh, so-and-so does all of this. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> okay, I'll save it a few more seconds. All right. Yeah, I think I'll end the polling now. Okay, so I'm gonna share those results. So again, hopefully that'll come up on your screen. Um, yeah, as, as I somewhat expected, because it is a really popular form, uh, we do have blog posts and articles right up at the top. We do a lot of blogging um, at My Editor Toolkit. That's kind of one of our main um, platforms that we use for content. Uh, we've also got quite a few people doing webinars as well. Hello, welcome to the club. <laughs> uh, webinars have been particularly popular um, in the last year for, for obvious reasons. Um, yeah, we've got quite a, a range of things here. Um, but yeah, blog posts and webinars seem to be kind of out in the front with, with videos as well. I've uh, got a couple of people doing podcasts. We've been dipping into podcasts as well. We've been sort of um, creating some of our webinars as podcasts as well and, and doing a little bit of original stuff there as well. Um, so a bit of a new area for us. And uh, testimonials, newsletters, it just shows there's so much out there. Um, obviously, there are more popular forms, but that people are getting quite a lot out of different platforms for their, for their content. So thank you for voting in that. Um, I'm just going to stop the results now. Okay. So. Uh, just moving on from that poll. Now for the nitty gritty stuff. Camille's top content tips. And obviously, I will try to uh, cover as, as much stuff as I can. Um, and these are sort of tried and tested tips that I have followed or I try to follow as, as closely as possible when it comes to content creation across the board. Um, and I will try to make them general. Um, some will be more tailored towards sort of blog posts and articles because as you can see from the poll and just sort of generally blog posts are really popular and written content is a huge thing, particularly online and in terms of um, search engine optimization. Um, but we do have a range of stuff out there. So I will be trying to sort of make reference to that as well. Okay. So top tip, probably one you've heard before, it's not exactly groundbreaking, but it's very important, write for your audience. But what does that mean? Um, basically, you've got to be considering who your audience are. Well, more than that, what your, what your target audience is in terms of who you want to be a customer, because you could be writing to appeal to lots of different people, but really you're wanting to kind of focus in on what's going to generate you really good quality leads and get you the right clients for you. So it's really appealing to, to that particular audience. Uh, that could be in a particular industry or sort of a particular level. You could be sort of wanting to um, be talking to HR managers perhaps, or um, business managers, directors, CEOs, uh, just depends on, on who you're looking to work with really, um, particularly in a B2B environment. 
and um, it's really important when you're considering your audience to speak their language. Um, so basically, for example, um, we work with quite a lot of employers um, who, are, who are looking for sort of HR software systems um, that may not necessarily be hugely up on the HR lingo because there are some sort of um, in industry terms that they might not have come across or know that much about. So it's kind of just understanding where your audience is coming from, their knowledge level. Um, you might even want to tailor different bits of content to people with different levels of knowledge. Um, so you might need to explain terms or you might kind of consider that they know what that is. And that's kind of important um, on what you're creating. And it's all about appealing to their experiences and then building on those with more knowledge. Um, so you're becoming sort of a trusted source of knowledge for that audience. And it's about prioritizing their needs. Um, so how can you help them? And um, it's also really important at this point to think about the purpose of your content as well. Um, are you looking to inform? Are you looking to entertain? Are you looking to persuade? And this kind of goes back to the marketing funnel I was talking about earlier, uh, about someone at an earlier stage in their kind of client journey um, might just be looking for more informational things. Um, so a blog post on a, a particular sort of bit of HR that they want to find out more about, whereas maybe later down the line, they might be looking for testimonials about your HR consultancy or business consultancy services, um, or perhaps they're looking for something that connects to them as maybe an employer or a manager that feels entertaining to them and kind of they can relate with. So. There's some different options there. And um, in terms of, of choosing topics, I mean, there's so many options out there. It is kind of like sometimes, what do you narrow down into? What do you prioritize in, in what you're covering? Um, because there are, yeah, so many options. Um, one really good tip is to narrow your focus, particularly if you're sort of starting out writing on a particular area or um, creating content in general, it can be quite tempting to try and just get everything into one page or post or webinar um, but obviously um, you can't cram everything into into one place and it can be good to kind of focus on something quite specific particularly like in a blog post or an article maybe if you are doing a huge guide like you know the complete guide to HR for small businesses um, <laughs> you know a big 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 chunky guide that could be a different thing but if you're doing a blog post um, you might want to sort of zone in on one particular thing that someone might be looking for online um, SEO wise in particular that means that um, that article is very likely to come up high on search engine results and get people clicking through. So that's one thing. And then it's also just really zoning in on a question someone has, what they want to know about, and giving them that answer. So it's really convenient for them. Okay. And you also want to find your angle. So basically, there is a lot of content out there online. As Marie said earlier, we're in a very content rich world now. Um, and, you know, finding your angle can be quite difficult. Um, your angle could literally just be that you have the most informative, useful article out there on it and the best quality and definitely go for it. Um, sometimes topics do have answers that come up on search engines quite well, but you think I could do better than that. I know more about that um, <laughs> and definitely go for it. But then also, if you can find a unique angle on something, something someone hasn't covered particularly or a particular kind of question or opinion on something that can really draw people in. And also look into what your competitors are writing. Um, so understanding sort of what the landscape is um, generally around what results are coming up for search engine searches, for example, or what your competitors are doing on social media and what seems to be working and how you can kind of stand out from that build better on that basically. Um, so how can you kind of make yourself stand out? Okay. And another really important thing is to hook them with your headlines, which I thought was quite a catchy way of putting it. Um, so the headline is incredibly important. Um, according to research from Copy Blogger, 80% um, of blog visitors will read your headline and only 20% will finish the article. Um, and you know for more sort of, uh, sort of content types that you invest even more in, like a webinar or a podcast, that's probably quite hard to hook people in as well, right? So you've got to have a really intriguing, catchy, memorable headline to, to get people on board. And um, there are a number of ways um, you can improve your headlines and sort of click-through rate, so rate at which people are then 
clicking onto your content and, and interacting with that. Um, so according to some of the research that I've done and, and things I've used that have worked, using numbers and data um, really helps for some reason, just something ticks in our brains when we read numbers, we go, yes, I want to learn more about that. Um, so I know typically you get all the sort of BuzzFeed listicles and things like that. So it is quite um, overused at this point and, and people are used to it, but having a number in there can really help and it is effective. Um, also using hyphens and colons um, kind of like adds a bit of um, gravitas to what you're saying. So it's kind of got topic and something interesting about it. Um, that can be a good way to kind of make people go, oh, I've been looking to learn about that topic and here's something interesting about it that I didn't know. Brilliant. Or some sort of strategies I can use. And um, that makes them more likely to click through. Um, also directly addressing the reader and that makes things feel more relevant to them. Um, so they're more likely to click. And um, also uh, the phrase how to. People are looking for how to's, information, guides, tips um, online. So that could be quite effective. And um, as I said, yeah, people are looking also for words such as strategies or ideas, reasons. Um, so yeah, um, different kind of techniques that they can use. So words like that are kind of, they, they tip the reader off or potential reader or content consumer that you know, they're gonna learn some sort of practical, um, sort of useful things. Okay. And I just, used a couple of examples from our blog. I've just taken a couple of um, screenshots of, of our blog post titles. And as you can see, um, I'm using the number three there, three performance management techniques, or techniques to boost your small business. So that's addressing the reader directly. And um, we've also got another example there, capability dismissals, colon, how to implement them fairly. So you've kind of got capability dismissals, that's the topic. And then this is how to do it. Um, so just a couple of examples. Of course, you can't use every technique in every headline. You've got to do what makes sense, um, but there are ways you can work those in. Okay. So another tip, again, not sort of uh, earth shatteringly <laughs> unique really, but uh, make it readable. Um, and what do I mean by that? Um, well, I could also mean watchable or listenable, depending on the medium you're using. And um, it's not just about making sure that there aren't spelling and grammar issues, although that's really important because there's nothing more off-putting than sort of having something where there's lots of spelling mistakes and it's just like difficult to read. You know, people are going to click off that straight away and go elsewhere. Um, it's also about how you format your content, um, so how it looks on the page, and um, you can kind of make it easier to read and more digestible um, or sort of just easier to, to get on board with by um, having really clear headings or topic changes, for example, if you're using a webinar. Um, you can also use lists and sort of other visual design elements to, to break things up a bit so it's not just a wall of text. And um, you can also use images and, and multimedia, so um, videos, podcasts, so other kinds of content, maybe on your article, for example, um, to, to break things up and kind of offer different options and more visuals. Um, and it's also about how easy your content is to read or otherwise consume. Um, for written text, for example, there are readability tools out there you can use uh, to check how accessible your piece is. And um, this sort of bases um, readability on factors such as average sentence length, average word length and, and other factors um, and kind of gives you a score. Um, so you can kind of use that as a bit of a benchmark for how kind of easy to consume or, or difficult your, your content is and whether you maybe need to change how you're writing a little bit um, and how accessible that is. And uh, search engines, for example, is shown um, that algorithmically they're more likely to favour um, results that are easier to read and consume and that users spend more time reading. Um, so important to consider. And um, we're going for another diagram here. Um, the inverted pyramid is another really useful content concept to think about. Um, this I originally heard about this um, in a journalism context, uh, which is basically make sure you've got your most important content at the top. Um, and in journalism, particularly historically, it was, you know, in the paper, there was only a certain amount of room um, to write about an article and you really wanted to grab people's attention. So, you know, make sure you've got the most important information at the top and then the more sort of nice to have bits, um, go further down. So hence that inverted pyramid structure. And um, it also works for content online, particularly because, you know, 
everyone nowadays reading stuff online and, and listening to stuff online we've got such short attention spans and there's so much out there to choose from um, so it's important to kind of get people's attention as soon as you can and um, also just as a final note on my content tips make sure to offer uh, the option for someone to convert um, so this could be earlier on in the process um, for example depending on where they are in the funnel um, you might want them to sign up for your blog or mailing list um, if they're kind of looking for informational content and then maybe further down the line uh, you might want them to be converting into a lead that you can then talk to your services about um, so perhaps on a, a sales page or something a bit later on down that sort of funnel process um, so for examples for converting uh, you get them to sign up for the blog register for this webinar make sure to get in touch with this read more about the service and and sort of um yeah connect to you to a feature page on your website and um i've just got a quick example um, of one of our articles and just a few of the things we're using in there um so as you can see we've got a little uh, colon in the title there as well so bank holiday working rules that's the topic it's a guide for employers so that's appealing to our target audience which are sort of um sme employers and um just got a few things covered in here um using a subheading on bank holiday rules and that's near the top of the article because that is the main thing people are wanting to learn from that um, so we've got that nice and high up with a big subheading um of course i've got an image there to break up the text just some piggy banks because it's fun <laughs> and um then further down in the article i've kind of just taken bits of this um we've got a little subheading a smaller one on managing bank holidays with software this is getting more into the conversion side of things um and uh, this is quite a hard conversion i think further up in the article we've kind of got like a subscribe to our blog whereas this is way down the end of the article when you can tell someone's been invested in that topic and they've, they've spent the time um so we will put in a bit more of a sales equal to action um or a cta which we've got down at the bottom there um on just reading our feature page on um, a holiday management system and um we also i did do a little readability score uh test for this piece um sorry if that's quite small but hopefully you can see that um and it says according to the grading it should be understood by 14 to 15 year olds which is pretty accessible um i think it could be more accessible from from what i looked at um and that's something you can kind of tweak by having shorter sentences um more use of active voice instead of passive voice so he went to the shop active um instead of passive um I'm trying to give an example now <laughs> um the house was cleaned by the man or something i don't know um <laughs> so instead of the man cleans the house which is active so that's a good thing um to do and um yeah um, there are more things you can do and i just put a little link at the bottom that's of webfx.com which is like a free readability tool that they use okay i'm just gonna touch on for a few minutes around reaching your prospective clients um because obviously it's not just about having that great content it's also about getting it out there getting the eyeballs on the content um because otherwise you'll be kind of uh, screaming into the void a little bit uh <laughs> so right a few tips on that um the one i'm going to cover in the most depth here um is about repurposing your content and how important that is as i said earlier people have their favorite mediums for, for content some people might prefer websites some prefer um podcasts webinars so really sort of um, being able to repurpose your content means that you're not kind of having to dedicate very specific time to each medium which is very time consuming you can kind of be using your content across mediums so just thinking in terms of for example say this webinar i think actually i could also write a blog post on how to create compelling content um, that I'm, I'm putting out there for, for consultants to use and that could be another way uh, for people to to find out about us and maybe even then go on to the webinar as well um, so that could be a way of sort of repurposing and for example say you've got a guide that you think actually that could also really work as a podcast um, depending on, on how you want to do things um, so you can kind of yeah just basically recycle reuse a little bit recycling it's always good um, to just make the use of your expertise your knowledge and the content you have but just to note, um, because I'm quite up on the SEO, um, you've got to make sure that it's unique content, particularly say you had a written guide online or a page that you thought, oh, I'm also going to make this a blog post. Um, 
that could get quite difficult because if you're using duplicate content on your website, so basically like copy pasting kind of thing, um, that can be seen as quite spammy or the pages could be competing with each other on search engine results. And that's not a, a great move. Um, so I wouldn't recommend that, but particularly if you're using different mediums, like say a, a webinar and a blog post and things like that, and um, you are making it unique um, to that sort of medium and, and bit of content, then you should be fine. Okay. And um, then also SEO and keyword research are also really important for reaching prospects. Um, using keyword research will help you tailor your piece to the potential audience you're looking to reach. And um, now is absolutely time for a cheeky plug um, because we have done a webinar on SEO um, that I did a few weeks back. And I think Marie's going to put a link to that in the chat. Um, so if you want to kind of dive further into using keywords and using SEO um, and what that all means, if that's very new to you, um, that will be the best webinar to go to to find out more. And as I also mentioned earlier um, on sort of different types of content to use, social media sharing is also very important. So having active social media channels um, and it's also a platform for content in itself. And another cheeky plug, <laughs> just because I realise I'm, I'm going uh, quite over time now a little bit ah, not too bad um we do have a webinar from our social media expert hannah wita who's our social media executive on social media for consultants as well so i would definitely recommend checking that out and again i think marie is going to pop a link to that in the chat as well um so if you do want to learn more about those two topics i would really recommend okay and just last but not least i'm going to cover a little bit on outsourcing or um, as I very grandiosely put it, the power of outsourcing, uh, because it can be very useful. Um, we certainly do outsource um, to external writers. We have guest writers, we have webinar guests as well. I mean, today it's just my head to toolkit people on this webinar, but on some of our big topical webinars, we do have guests on and that's really great. Um, but it does take a little bit of managing to get all this done um, and, and to sort of work with external contributors. So just thought I'd drop a few tips about that. Um, but firstly, little poll, we love a poll. <laughs> um, so I was just wondering, do you outsource any of your content activities? Is that something you're already doing? Again, just so I kind of know where you guys are coming from. Um, and I'm, I'm talking to you accurately to, to what your experience is. Um, so I'm just going to launch that poll. Um, so it's, do you outsource any of your content activities? And you can choose yes, no, or considering it. Okay, so I'll just wait for some votes to come in. second okay great i will end that poll and share the results okay and uh, yeah it looks like most people aren't currently outsourcing their content um and a few people are all considering it so bit of a 50 50 split there um yeah which makes sense i think that um particularly when you are writing on an area of expertise um that you already know about you may not need to or want to outsource um but there are kind of like other skills that external contributors could kind of bring um so i'm just going to look into that a little bit and just explain kind of the different considerations you can make in terms of outsourcing okay so the power of outsourcing, um, basically in, in terms of outsourcing your content to external contributors, it's really important to think what can they bring to the table for you? Um, and one thing that maybe you don't have as, as a consultant, who's got a lot of other stuff going on and isn't like directly sort of just doing marketing. Um, you might want to look to someone who has sort of SEO and marketing skills. Um, that could be quite useful, kind of marrying up your business knowledge and your sort of industry knowledge um, with someone who can kind of really help you maximize that online. That could be kind of one way to look at things. Um, and also, it's really good to look at sort of the, the potential audience or reach that external contributors have as well. May not be the best if it's someone who works in marketing. So obviously, they won't be sort of directly in your industry. It could be that they are someone who is in kind of HR, employment law, that kind of area, and then also has those skills. That's kind of like 
that's golden <laughs> and um but also yeah some some people will have really good audiences as well like some with our sort of external writers we do look at kind of how active they are on social media and sort of what kind of audience they can draw in for us as well because that's really great um and then also it's really great to look at um kind of what experience and knowledge you have and then maybe things that you don't have as directly but you think would appeal to your customers or potential clients um you can kind of bring external people in particularly as kind of like guests on, on webinars or podcasts or blog posts um doing interviews and things like that um that could be a, a great way to kind of it's it's a bit of a you scratch my back i scratch your situation because you're kind of helping them advertise their services also bringing in people who would then probably be interested in what you're doing as well and just sort of bringing in informative interesting trustworthy content um, onto your platform for people to uh, read or otherwise consume okay and just a few quick tips on how to outsource firstly really important to decide your budget um because it could get away with you if you just think i'm gonna you know get all these different writers on um or whatever and you know it can get quite expensive so it's really good to kind of set that budget and and decide sort of how much you're you're willing to spend and um, perhaps each month or, or annually and how that kind of fits with your goals um, and there's also quite a few different places to look as well um, for your external contributors there are sort of freelancer websites out there uh, quite a few different ones where you can find people who perhaps have kind of those marketing skills and then also have knowledge in your area as well which would be great um, LinkedIn is another great kind of um, source for particularly finding experts within particular fields that you might want to work with um, and then also job boards as well um, you can even advertise and that could be another way of going around things particularly if you are looking for more sort of um, permanent connections with external contributors and um, also another really important thing that I found very useful in working with our external contributors is to provide a content brief um, so basically it depends on the medium you're using um, but for webinars with our guests we kind of send out information on what our webinar is all about, what the process is, what we're kind of expecting from them, what we're providing, and just making it all really clear, um, you know, inviting them to ask any questions. Um, and then also on blog posts, for example, we do get external sort of HR and employment law writers um, to, to write for us and, and contribute. And um, I like to provide a, a brief from sort of an SEO and marketing perspective and kind of like show my thought process and what we're looking for on a particular topic and um, kind of how we're wanting to put that across in any important points and then obviously not you know it's not like a draconian law like you have to write this kind of thing but more just kind of here are some guidelines on what we're looking for and then they kind of add in their expertise and, and knowledge and, and writing flair and the other skills that they have and um, I found that really brings out the best in that in that piece of content definitely okay so if we just move on to the q and I've noticed there's a couple of questions in there. Um, so I think Marie's going to pop back on now. Yeah, great. Thank you very much, Camille. Um, that was really helpful. So just a bit of a reminder, we're just going to move into our Q&A uh, right now. Um, there are a couple of questions in the Q&A, so I'm just going to go through them. If you do have any questions, please do feel free to ask them. Uh, ask Camille any of your burning uh, questions in the Q&A box. OK, so first question. Um, so this person has asked, where's the best place to find out where potential customers are searching for? Well, sorry, what potential customers are searching for? Yeah, so this is this is basically um, keyword research um, is, is going to be your best friend <laughs> for finding out what customers are looking for online. And there are kind of a few different ways you can do this. And I'd really recommend checking out my SEO webinar. But as a, a sort of a, a brief overview, um, there are kind of free and paid options, basically, because, um, you know, that's the world we're in. We pay for, for the good services, but there are also free ways of doing it. Um, for example, if you were to go on Google and search for a particular topic, I'm just trying to uh, think of an example, maybe uh, just one of the blog posts earlier, capability to dismissal or something, um, if perhaps an employer was looking for that and more information. And um, so you type that in. And then often with topics, uh, Google comes up with related searches and questions. And even as you're typing into the toolbar, it will be coming up with sort of suggestions. And um, so that can be a really good way and a free way to kind of figure out what people are looking for, 
what related stuff is out there. Also, if you scroll the to the bottom of your Google search result page as well, there will be related searches. Um, so that's all quite useful. Um, Google does have its own keyword research tool that you can use, um, but it's more geared towards um, PPC or paid search um, and isn't always the most accurate. And um, there are uh, paid tools out there as well you can use. Uh, we use SEMrush, uh, which is quite a good one, but if that's something you're willing to put a bit more budget to, um, that could be a really good option. And um, yeah, there's um, also another really good one. Um, I'm just gonna double check the um, name of it because I found this quite useful. I've not used it for a little while. Yeah, there's a website and it's called answerthepublic.com. And basically you can type in a question or sort of keyword phrase and it will just like show you uh, lots of questions and things that people are looking for, which is particularly great for coming up with blog posts, blog post ideas or topics um, because you can basically just type in for example, we might type in HR software um, as like a really obvious one for, for us and it will come up with sort of different, loads of different questions people are asking around it um, and it has a bit of an indicator of how many people are searching for that per month as well, um, which most keyword tools have um, and that could be a useful one as well. So that's answerthepublic.com. recommend. But um, yeah, my SEO webinar goes into a lot more depth on, on keyword research and how to do that. Great, thank you. Uh, so I'm just asking, yes, um, I can answer this one. The webinar is being recorded, so uh, we will send that out uh, after the um, after the webinar. So that's fine. Um, I think someone's asked a bit more specific. You, I think you must have touched upon the fact that um, they've asked, can they get the link for the web FX again? Yes, that's the, the readability tool. Uh, there are quite a few different ones online that you may want to check out, but this is just like a, a little benchmarking one I use. Um, it's quite useful. And um, I just had it up actually, but it's um, webfx.com slash tools slash readable. So I'll pop that in the chat um, just because that's That'd be great. much easier to find. I don't know where my chat box has gone actually. There we go. Cool. Um, so what's going to do that? In. Yeah. Any any other specific questions around, um, you know, your own content or trying to make it stand out or like, you know, what she's kind of kind of across? Um, we've got a little bit of time, so feel free to feel free yeah, to ask. She's very welcome. Um, yeah, I guess, Camille, I, you know, maybe just finishing off then, like obviously you've talked a lot about content and it's probably a case of just trying out different things to see whether different things work um as well as obviously like you know having a bit of thought but like I, i've noticed that when i've been doing bits and pieces it's sometimes you try some stuff sometimes you try it at different times different days um uh, different sort of angles on it i noticed there are my hl toolkit ones which have us and the team do do pretty well compared to some of the others because it's got a people element there so yeah especially on social definitely and um it, it depends on your platform as well and, and what people are looking for. For example, you know, if someone's looking on a blog, they're probably looking for more informational things, where if, it, if they're on social, they're kind of looking for more maybe lifestyle and something mm. with a bit more personality and, and something more entertaining. Um, and then, yeah, it, it really depends on the, on the platform and the audience you're trying to sort of appeal to. Um, and um, I think that also in terms of testing, um, as you mentioned earlier, particularly with sort of blog posts um, and things where you can edit them quite easily, it's always great to go back and see how things are doing, try something different and just see whether it sticks, you know, maybe update your, your headline and how the page title looks on search engine results and see if that increases the amount that people want to click through and are intrigued by your, your content. Um, so testing different things is, is definitely really useful. And, you know, oftentimes, I mean, with kind of recorded stuff, maybe not so much, but particularly with written content, um, you can be editing it and tweaking it, updating it. I'm often doing that with, based on our keyword results for a particular blog post, I'll go back and be like, how can we serve that better? And how mm. can we sort of um, appeal to that audience better? And how can we improve? Cool. Okay, I think uh, you've answered obviously everyone's questions in the presentation. Um, as I said, we will be sending out a recording. Obviously, feel free if you come up with any questions to pop them along to us. Uh, thank you, Camille, for your time again today on um, on the webinar. And a reminder that if you would like to join us on, oh, hang on, got one more. We'll add one more. Um, do you have any suggestions around best equipment for doing webinars and podcasts? Yeah, um, I'm not sure if they mean equipment in terms of like actual sort of hardware or kind of like the, the platforms you use. Um, 
in terms of sort of online, um, we use Zoom for our webinars, as you may know, <laughs> um, and we found that really, really good. Um, again, there's sort of free options and, and paid options, depending on, on how big you want to go with it. Um, there are other tools out there. I, there are other kind of webinars that I've been on um, that I've thought mm, maybe not as sort of great shakes, but then everyone gets used to their own platform, don't they? <laughs> um, and um, as for podcasts, um, again, depends on how in depth you want to go with it. Um, usually if I've got like an interview with someone, um, I will again do it via Zoom and record it. Um, but you may, if you want to kind of do something a little more high level, um, you may want to uh, download software. There's a free one, Audacity. It's just really quite easy to use. And there are kind of other fancier options out there as well. Um, but you can kind of use that and have your guest in an interview, for example, use that as well. So you've got your separate audio files. So then it's a bit nicer to edit and everything. And Audacity is quite easy for, for editing audio as well. Um, and again, I, I do use really basic tools for our webinars for any editing because we keep them quite as recorded. Um, and um, hardware wise, um, I mean, as you can see today, it's quite informal. We're just kind of using our, our regular um, laptop mics. Um, but then if you are wanting to go a little bit fancier, um, there are uh, mics you can go for. Um, <laughs> it's just getting really in depth here, but for um, my podcast audio, when I record intros, I have a Rode M2 microphone that's really lovely quality. And it costs me like not that much for the quality of it. It's quite like, like a mid tier quality microphone as you're not having to pay like hundreds on it but it is really nice um and then i also have an audio interface for it as well um if you get a usb mic um obviously you can just plug that in um whereas the rode m2 is not a usb mic uh, so you do have to have an audio and i use the behringer um one of theirs as an audio interface but again if you're wanting to go a bit simpler and there are some really nice usb mics out there as well and again price range can vary hopefully that's been helpful <laughs> Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, great. Yeah, so as, as I've mentioned, um, please do feel free to, to sign up to the next uh, webinar, which we have put in the uh, chat box. And also when we follow up on the webinar today, we will also include the link. But otherwise, thank you very much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of the week. It's looking pretty sunny. Uh, and we will speak to we will speak to you soon. Thanks very much. Thank <laughs> you.